Okay, hello, welcome back to the Land Rover Toolbox videos. This is the underground version. Um, we're going a bit maverick at the moment and I'm gonna do some stuff on the board for you. And um, what we're doing is diesel fuel systems, okay? These are relevant to all Land Rovers, to a point. I'm not gonna explain all the nuts and bolts. What I wanna do in this one is just explain these fuel systems. Because when you understand fuel systems, you then start to understand how you can diagnose um, these sort of systems. Now, excuse the quality, sound's not the best, and I'm using daylight outside, and you can see it'll go dark and light. I'm sorry about that, but it's just the way it is at the moment. Right, so the first one I want to talk about is the rotary or inline um, diesel fuel systems, okay? This is the longest standing one at the moment. We've had a lot of changes through the years to get us up to uh, emissions um, standards, Euro 6 and beyond, okay? Um, beforehand, rotary and inline on a diesel, inline pumps and rotary pumps were very, very common. Now, inline, we don't really need to worry about that because that's, unless you've got something with a Mazda engine or Isuzu engine or something like that, you won't have an inline pump uh, what you'll have is a, a rotary pump. Now, these are totally mechanical, yeah? Okay. So we're talking, we're talking about vacuums, pressures, and mechanical moving parts. So the main parts of these systems, everything has a fuel um, tank. It's got to have a fuel tank. Where else are you going to get your fuel from? You don't get it from the fresh air, okay? Um, you'll have filtering systems on it that is just common all right standard you filter your diesel to make sure it's clean as possible so it doesn't interfere with the uh, the moving parts or in the later cases uh, some of the electronic parts as well um, but basically this uh, is limited okay this is very very limited you only get a certain rev range uh, 300 TDI what is it, 3,500 RPM? And that's with a double stage injection. The earlier engines are a bit slower, even though they call these engines high speed engines, high speed diesels, because beforehand they were slow. They were slow and chuggy like ship boats, engines, okay? Um, the other thing to note about these, these um, is basically, they only had a certain range. Your emissions, you could only get it down so far. Okay, it had to be mechanically set to get the, the right timing. And basically, it is like a Swiss watch. Okay, it will only do so much. You can't get a stopwatch, for instance, on that. The second one is Pomp Douche. Now this, you'll know this when I say TD5, okay. Um, this is where we start to go into uh, electronic control, okay? So with the rotary pump is a distributor, okay? That is the job of the pump, is to distribute pressurized diesel, which goes to the injectors, the injectors then when they open, with the pressure that lifts off the nozzle, uh, the needle, will then atomize the diesel, right? So, when you get into the TD5, um, the injectors, injectors, they are independent, okay? Independent. So what happens with this, they're electronically controlled to, to open them, but the pressure is made by running a cam. Cam runs on a pump uh, to pressurize the diesel in the injector and then when the ECU says to inject, it will inject. Okay, so you have wiring here. The whole fuel system is ECU controlled. It depends on information coming from the engine and uh, the ECU will then determine what it needs to do with uh, preset parameters. These are quite robust engine systems um, you can lose um, your MAF sensor, for instance, and you will still be able to run. It has a default in the ECU, for instance, so it will then keep running on a default setting. It probably won't run properly, but it will run, okay? Now, the third one is common rail. Obviously, this is now. 
this is now it is being improved to get higher pressures and uh, better emissions uh, are there any problems with these yes they are they're, they're more uh, el electronically dependent okay so basically common rail is exactly what it says it has one rail which is common which pressurizes to let's say 3000 um, bar not psi and then the injectors are fed with a constant pressure and they open when the ECU decides that it wants to. Now the ECU is taking information from the engine again and the exhaust system. Now this is the big difference between the two, um, is that the exhaust system plays a, a massive part in controlling all the diesel um, system now. With the Pont Douche, you had a uh, pressurized reservoir. That's not common rail. Okay, that is the cylinder head pressurizing to 4.5 bar. It supplies fuel to the injectors, but it doesn't fire them off. The ECU does that, but the injectors will increase the pressure. Where it was with the common rail, the pressure in the common rail is what the injectors will have. Okay, so they don't, the injectors do not generate their own pressure. Okay, so what you'll see is this is on the Puma engines. Okay, well every engine, I think you're talking about the uh, discoveries and, and the such like, they all have the, the same thing, the common rails. Okay, what the common rail has, um, which this doesn't have and this doesn't have, okay, it has a high pressure pump, okay. High pressure pump. Whereas this one, okay, has a relatively low pressure pump. And that will come from the tank to the cylinder head, yeah? Right, yeah, so basically what you have is low pressure to the cylinder head on the pump douche. The injectors then will take the pressure up and the ECU will then let it squirt, will tell it to squirt when it needs to. Okay. Um, the common rail, which we probably won't look at too much because not many of you have them. You're more this rotary pump because we understand that this is more mechanical and you don't have ECUs and sensors to, uh, to think about. You need less diagnostics. However, with this, this is more complicated. If you have problems with a rotary pump, you have to then um, go to the expense of having somebody look at your pump if you find that this has a problem. The injectors are expensive. Injectors are expensive on this, even more so, and then the common rail injectors are also very expensive. The, uh, I'll talk about the, why these need to be coded later, uh, but basically these are set. Um, they have a certain engineering setting when they uh, recondition or, or make the injectors. You have to tell the ECU what tolerances they have so the ECU can um, adjust um, to work with the injectors on a common rail. Whereas this old stuff, you can get away with um, quite a lot because this is, this is rough and ready. This is a rough shot, okay? So what I want to do, um, I'm not going to go too far into this because this is only just a, a basic introduction, okay? I'll then now describe the um, rotary pump um, fuel system and then we'll, we'll look at it, understand it, and then we'll go through some basic diagnostics techniques, okay, which you'll probably need to know. More so with the, with the TD5, you, you need um, scanners, you need uh, pressure gauges and such, like in common rail, well, you, you do need to have a scanner that's up to date that can read this stuff. And it's not always the best because you still need intuition to um, work with common rail. You need experience, you need to know how the system works. Well, in fact, you need to know what the, how the, all of these systems work to be able to diagnose stuff. It's a pain in the backside, but if you can um, understand it, you can get uh, more into it, as they say, because you have these people who have the touch, as they say, you know, that touch, they can just do things. Well, they don't, it does, it does, that doesn't come out of fresh air, that comes out of knowledge out of your head, uh, understanding systems, being able to deal with systems, identifying parts and, and that sort of thing, 
and then being able to do it. Yeah, and that comes with experience and knowledge, doesn't it? So, okay, next video.